sense logic, literature, psychoanalysis, and trauma. July 24, 2019 slash Sengiz Erdem. First posted on May 4, 2009. I philosophies only in terror, but in the confessed terror of going mad one. Jacques Derrida. The circle of the eternal return is a circle which is always eccentric in relation to an always decentered center too. Jill Delos. Architecture of the White Hotel. Published in 1981. D. M. Thomas's The White Hotel is a post-structuralist novel which employs parody to expose the absences of meaning inherent in itself. In prologue D. M. Thomas gives the impression that he is publishing the real letters written by Freud and his friends. Written in the form of a documentary this part is followed by a surrealist poem giving voice to Lisa Erdman's dreams and fantasies. Here we look at the world with the eyes of a young man and a young woman. They have no identities. Their world is not separated from themselves, and nothing is categorized. Their everything can turn into something else including its opposite, everything is replaceable with another thing, and everything is intermingled, no distinction is made between internal and external objects, stars fall from the sky like rain, trees mix with the sea, young woman turns into Magdalene, and drinks the wind. The consciousness and the body of the man and the woman become one with the universe in this surrealist poem. In this first chapter the gap between what is real and what is not is filled, the boundary between the fictional and social reality is erased, and a fantastic vision of the world is presented. In the part following this poetic part the same events are narrated in prose employing the techniques of the symbolists and abstract expressionists. The third chapter is the case study of Lisa Erdman, a.k.a. Frau Anna. Frau Anna's illness and the therapeutic process are narrated in such a way as to give the impression that we are reading Freud's notebook. The language of this chapter is scientific and conforms to the norms of scientific objectivity. There are occasional footnotes and scientific documents. It is only through a footnote that the reader is given hint that all this is actually fictional and has nothing to do with what has actually happened. In this footnote it said that Freud's notebook containing the case studies was burnt in 1933. If the text is based on facts so too must the footnote be based on facts, so what we have been reading cannot be Freud's own writing. In other words the text is not taking itself seriously, the text is deconstructing itself, shifting the ground beneath his feet and eventually collapsing in on itself. The text negates what it claims to be the truth and turns into a parody of itself. In the fourth chapter all the forms and contents of narrative in the previous chapter are brought together under the roof of a traditional and realistic forms of writing. Events are situated in their proper historical contexts and are presented linearly with all the cause-effect relationships in order. The characters are presented in accordance with the symbolic order and show signs of progress in time. In this context science, art, and life seem to be interconnected and the reader is given the impression that rational discourse on them and their relationship with each other is possible. The fifth chapter is almost exactly the opposite of the second chapter. The subject who had become one with the universe and was continually changing in harmony with nature in the second chapter, becomes the subject of death, alienation, trauma, and separation. This chapter is about the Ukrainian Jews who thought they were being taken to Jerusalem by train, but soon found themselves naked and about to be killed. Lisa is among these Ukrainian Jews. Alienation, detachment, instability, human destroying human, fear and violence are all analyzed in terms of their relations to death and nothingness. The narrative form is mostly naturalistic, and yet touched by a little bit of symbolism here and there. The sixth and the last chapter of the White Hotel resembles the second chapter in that it is composed of dream visions. Here all events and all sensations are accepted without questioning, and even without comprehension. This unmediated knowledge is articulated through a surrealistic narrative. As a whole the White Hotel is an attempt to find a way of expressing the trauma of the Holocaust. In his The Holocaust and the Literary Imagination, Lawrence Langer investigates the representability of the traumatic experiences and their effects. How should art how can art represent the inexpressibly inhuman suffering of the victims, without doing an injustice to that suffering? If art, as Adorno concedes, is perhaps the last remaining sanctuary where that suffering can be paid honest homage, 
enshrining it permanently in the imagination of the living as the essential horror that it was, the danger also exists of this noble intention sliding into the abyss of its opposite three. For Langer, trying to represent the Holocaust invites the negation of the real situation by tranquilizing the reader with a kind of aesthetic sublimation resulting in temporary satisfaction. So the writer should find a suitably disturbing form to be able to make the reader feel the pain of the suffering. The writer should aim at such a way of expression as to disturb the reader, rather than provide him slash her with fetish objects to stand in for the real of the Holocaust. The real may be unattainable, it may be that which is non-symbolizable, the unnameable truth of what really happened, and yet splitting the narrative, interrupting the continuity, dissolving the structure, may themselves turn out to be the very qualities that renders it possible for the reader to touch the real without really touching it. In the White Hotel we only glimpse at the extent of loss and get a sense of the inordinate measure of suffering involved in traumatic experiences. The mind resists what it feels to be imaginatively valid but wants to disbelieve, and the task of the artist is to find a style and a form to present the atmosphere or landscape of atrocity, to make it compelling, to coax the reader into credulity and ultimately, complicity. The fundamental task of the critic is not to ask whether it should or can be done, since it already has been, but to evaluate how it has been done, judge its effectiveness, and analyze its implications for literature and society for. How can you make someone feel the other's pain through language, especially when this pain is unnameable? For Langer identification is necessary for ethical action. So the writer should find the proper way of saying what he means to say in such a way as to create the conditions of possibility for the reader's identification with the character. Langer thinks that making the reader identify with the Holocaust victims invites ethical questioning of the situation. Langer seems to be blind to what is really at work in an identification process. The real, the traumatic kernel resists signification, it is an eruption which exists in the form of an absence. Creating gaps within the text itself helps to create the effects of absence and loss on the reader. But there is also a negative aspect of producing absence of meaning and presence of obscurity in the text. The writer may find himself slash herself inviting projective identification with his slash her characters. Creating absences of meaning within the text does not always alienate the reader from the text, quite the opposite may be the case it leaves spaces within the text onto which the reader can project his slash her narcissistic image of self. It is only in the shape of such novels as The White Hotel that we can reconcile ourselves to being caught up in an irresolvable conflict situation between the life drive and the death drive. It is this antagonism inherent in human condition itself that fascism exploited, and has not ceased to exploit in the way not only of murdering masses, but also of making the masses murder themselves and one another. At a first glance the White Hotel looks like a poetic novel about the Jewish Holocaust feeding on the mythological imagery of psychoanalysis. In the author's note, D.M. Thomas says, One could not travel far in the landscape of hysteria the terrain of this novel without meeting the majestic figure of Sigmund Freud. Freud becomes one of the dramatis personae, in fact, as discoverer of the great and beautiful modern myth of psychoanalysis. By myth, I mean a poetic dramatic expression of a hidden truth, and in placing this emphasis, I do not intend to put into question the scientific validity of psychoanalysis 5. The prologue of the White Hotel is composed of five letters written by Freud, Sander Ferenczi, his lover Gisela, and Sachs. The first letter is written by Ferenczi to his lover Gisela on 8 September 1909. In this letter Ferenczi talks about his feelings and fantasies and as he does this he mentions the disagreement between Freud and Jung. According to Ferenczi, Jung has interpreted one of Freud's dreams in such a way as to cause anxiety in Freud. And upon this Freud said to Jung that he would never ever give any information to him about his personal life. What Thomas does in the third chapter to criticize Freud becomes relevant here. Thomas tells of the basic principles and techniques of psychoanalysis using the discourse of psychoanalysis in a dramatic way, that is, by dramatizing psychoanalysis and parodying Freud. The relationship between the id, the ego, and the superego, together with the external factors influencing this relationship are narrated through Freud's notes on a case study. Frau Anna, who is in fact Lisa Erdmann, is the object of study. 
Freud interprets Lisa's writings and speeches, and the reader reads this interpretation as part of the novel. From what Freud writes about Lisa the reader gets the message that Freud is a human, as you see he is in error about Lisa, his interpretations are misinterpretations and are limited by his desires, anxieties, and obsessions, he cannot be objective, he can never know the truth of Lisa's words, which Thomas will tell us later in his novel. At the beginning of his career Freud did think that the cause of mental illnesses is the return of the repressed contents of a personal unconscious, which were mostly of a sexual nature. Jung, on the other hand, linked the cause of mental illnesses to what he called a collective unconscious which was the accumulation of the experience of humanity throughout history as a whole. For Freud the cause of illness had something to do with a past personal event, whereas for Jung mental illness had something to do with the present and its relation to the future. Jung concentrated on the present moment in which the past and the future dissolved into one another, but Freud insisted on looking for the cause of illness in the personal history of the patient. Throughout the novel Freud links Lisa's mental and physical problems to some traumatizing sexual experiences she had when she was a young girl. According to Freud every metaphorical image Lisa uses in her surreal poems is a translation of Lisa's unconscious desires, they are the returned forms of a repressed memory, symptoms of a traumatic event. For instance Freud interprets the imagery of White Hotel in Lisa's dreams as a manifestation of her will to unite with the maternal body, and perhaps a will to go back into the secure environment of the womb in which nothing is required of the organism. Nietzsche would have said that Lisa's will is a will to nothingness rather than willing nothing. Lisa does get better after Freud's therapy, she returns to music, she even gets married. But Lisa soon realizes that this is only a temporary period of happiness. Lisa thinks that her mental problems have something to do with the future, rather than the past. The reference to Jung is obvious. In a letter she writes to Freud she confesses that she told lies to Freud about her past. As for the reason behind her lies Lisa says. Is there any family without a skeleton in the cupboard? Frankly I didn't always wish to talk about the past, I was more interested in what was happening to me then, and what might happen in the future. In a way you made me become fascinated by my mother's sin, and I am forever grateful to you for giving me the opportunity to delve into it. But I don't believe for one moment that had anything to do with my being crippled with pain. It made me unhappy but not ill-6. The difference between Jung and Freud is a difference in method. Freud asks why this dream, why has the patient had this particular dream rather than any other? But Jung says that his own aim is the purpose of the dream, what the dream introduces to the patient's world. Although Thomas doesn't bring Jung and Lisa together at this stage of the novel, he implies that Jung's attitude is more convenient for Lisa's therapy. That Lisa's symptoms, rather than being the manifestations of a sexually oriented neurosis as Freud assumed, are related to the Holocaust to come, that his symptoms are themselves the emotional response she gives to the aggressive impulses haunting Europe is very similar to what Jung experienced in 1910s. In 1910s, Jung, just like Lisa, was having hallucinations and was relating these to his personal life. But later it became clear to Jung that these hallucinations were a result of the approaching violence on a massive scale. In Memories, Dreams, Reflections, Jung writes that following the death of some of his friends he suffered from mental and physical problems similar to those of Lisa. The couple's Eros slash Thanatos, Heaven slash Hell, Love slash Hate, Venus slash Medusa in Lisa's poem are references to Jung's theories. For Jung the archetypes in the collective unconscious of humanity is made of a series of oppositions. Among these good and evil are the most important ones and are the two inseparable absolutes. In the novel Lisa says, What torments me is whether life is good or evil. I think often of that scene I stumbled into on my father's yacht. The woman I thought was praying had a fierce, frightening expression, but her reflection was peaceful and smiling. The smiling woman, I think it must have been my aunt, was resting her hand on my mother's breast, as if to reassure her it was all right, she didn't mind zero. But the faces at least to me now were so contradictory. And must have been contradictory in themselves too, the grimacing woman, joyful, and the smiling woman, sad. Medusa and Ceres, as you so brilliantly say. 
It may sound crazy, but I think the idea of the incest troubles me far more profoundly as a symbol than as a real event. Good and evil coupling, to make the world. No, forgive me, I am writing wildly. The Ravings of a Lonely Spinster, 7. Jung's answer to Lisa's question is in his psychology and alchemy. According to Jung, in the self good and evil are indeed closer than identical twins. Hence the truth about the self the unfathomable union of good and evil comes out concretely in the paradox that although sin is the gravest and most pernicious thing there is, it is still not so serious that it cannot be disposed of with probabilist arguments 8. From Ferenczi's letter to Freud at the beginning of the novel we learn that Jung offends Freud by interpreting imagery of peat bog corpses as the bodies of prehistoric men mummified by the effect of the humic acid in the bog water. 9. Jung connects these peat bog corpses to the primitive prehistoric monster running free in the unconscious. Freud almost faints upon hearing Jung's interpretation and furiously accuses Jung of being full of envious feelings toward him. At the end of the novel, however, the peat bog corpses turn out to be something completely other than what Freud and Jung thought they were. Thomas questions not only Freud's but also Jung's theories of the unconscious. The peat bog corpses are neither symptoms of neurosis, as Freud says, nor are they signifiers of the primitive side of man as Jung says. The peat bog corpses refer to the traumatic kernel of what happened during the Holocaust, the thousands of Holocaust victims massacred at Bobby Yar. Neither Freud's nor Jung's theories can interpret and cure Lisa's illness, because they both impose a symbolic meaning upon the real of Lisa's experiences. Just like psychoanalysis, literature too tries to symbolize the real and translate the unconscious drives into conscious and desirable forms. The forms, however, are false representations of the unconscious, and usually give false forms to percepts and effects. Literature is a falsification of the real. In accordance with this, Thomas often refers to other literary and non-literary texts, makes connections between them to expose their self-contradictions, his meaning itself dissolves in this web of relations, meaning proliferates. Finding himself slash herself in this hubris of intertextuality, in this abundance of meaning, the reader thinks that he slash she has understood the novel, when in fact he slash she is drowning in the meaninglessness overflowing the text. All this illusions collapse with the chapter about Bobby Yar. It becomes clear to the reader that it was all an illusion, and behind this illusion there is nothing but a big, black, hungry spider waiting for him slash her. Where there should have been a void, death, there is this black spider to stand in for it. This black spider is the Lacanian objet petit a par excellence. In the White Hotel objet petit a is a life-consuming monster projected onto the real. Lisa sighed. Why is it like this, Richard? We were made to be happy and to enjoy life. What's happened? He shook his head in bafflement, and breathed out smoke. Were we made to be happy? You're an incurable optimist, old girl. 10. Reference Matter 1. Jacques Derrida, Cogito, and the History of Madness, From Writing and Difference, Trans. Alan Bass London and New York, Routledge, 2001, 76. 2. Jill Delos, The Logic of Sense, Trans. Mark Lester and Charles Stivell, ed. Constantin V. Boundas, London and New York, Continuum, 2003, 264. 3. Lawrence Langer, The Holocaust and the Literary Imagination, London, Yale University Press. 1975, 1. 4. Langer, 22. 5. D. M. Thomas, The White Hotel, London, Victor Gollinch, 1981, 6. 6. Thomas, 171. 7. Thomas, 171. 8. Carl G. Jung, Problems of Alchemy, Selected Writings, ed. Anthony Storr, New Jersey. Princeton University Press, 1983, 270-1. 9 Thomas, 10. 10 Thomas, 239-40. Share this. Post navigation. Leave a reply. Search for.
Black Club Minimalist Onto Log Sengiz Erdem Black Club Emergent Sense Matters Post Nihilistic Speculations Alienations Links Black Club Introspector Black Club Introspector Black Club Retrospector Black Club Retrospector Black Club Sense Hector Elaine Badiou Capitalism Sengiz Erdem Jill Delos Jacques Lacan Capitalism Philosophy Psychoanalysis Quentin Malasu Ray Brassier Slava Heek Social Sciences Speculative Realism Speculative Jurassic Yarit Kake Olam Says Luck to Yarizi Black Club Minimalist Onto Log Pages Slash Safeler Numina The Book of Nihil Black Club Sense Hector Black Club Introspector Black Club Retrospector Black Club Translator Black Club Emergent Sense Matters Sense Logic Three Modalities of the Imminent Infinity, Life, Matter and Thought in Henry, Deleuze and Badiou, Audio Essay A Brief Note on Kant Zero RPHA and Drift Archive The Imminence of Truths Elaine Badiou Hyperstition, Altering the Supposedly Predestined Future, or, Utopia as Method, Structure and Process Dialectics of Time and Event from Kant and Hegel to Deleuze and Badiou Cronenberg Burroughs, Delos, 2, The Evil Spirit and the Spiritual Automaton. The Trouble with Pleasure, Delos and Psychoanalysis Subliminal Sensibility. Slava Heat Master Class 1 and 2, Surplus Value, Surplus Enjoyment, Surplus Knowledge. Three Modalities of the Imminent Infinitude, Life, Matter and Thought in Henry, Delos and Badiou. Letter Box. Black Club Wonder About Your Wonder. Mediate the Emerging Mediator Black Club Speculations Suggested Reading Black Club Imminent Entities Ontological Catastrophes and Transcendental Time Machines, Dialectics of Time and Event Form Kant and Hegel, Across Delos and Badiou, Towards New Futures Yaratasai Yazarlik V. E. Felsf Erdem It's Not the Number That Matters <laughs>